So the tourist versus locals issue is a, at the centerpiece of my job every single day. And we are a very important part of New York City's economy, especially as the finance sector has shrunk. And I think that, again, I've been so impressed with, with Singapore being very strategic about how it has worked to make itself more known and more central to the tour, the growing, what is going to be the continuing to grow, enormous growth in tourism economy. And so I think it's a smart move competitively. But I think it, there's always a tension between uh, the tourists and locals, especially if you get more successful with tourists, then the locals start to resent it and resist it. At the same time, tourists want authentic assets. They want something that's distinctive. And so, so, so much of our public art program, so much of our other things are really, and that little series we did of your uh, uh, Times Square NYC, your Times Square, that's directed towards New Yorkers. Because we have several hundred thousand people that work in our district. Most, at least half the people that go to Broadway shows regularly are, are locals. And so we are constantly thinking about when we're making decisions about programming, uh, is this something that feels like it's authentic New York? At the same time, uh, I think when one thinks about a city as a whole, there's been a lot of conversation about having a diverse set of assets that you're offering up. So a tourist may come the first time and they want to see your major sites and major museums and iconic spots, but then they want to have a, they, not all of them, but some of them want to have a neighborhood experience. And so that idea of having, just as, as any corporation would do with it, its products, they've got distinctive offerings for different kinds of people with different interests I think that's that's what you what you want to do and I think the way you do that without losing your soul is this kind of assessment of your core assets and distinctive qualities and th and that notion of it's not one size fits all what is it about Chinatown that's different what is it about the Arab district what is it about um, that great the great area with all the um, uh, Art Deco architecture yeah John Buru. Um uh, and, and many others that I'm sure I don't know, like what do you really do to enhance and nurture those distinctive assets, some of which are physical, some of which are, are intangible. Um, your second question was about, oh, how do you get the stakeholders that everybody did? So I'd say that, um, so every single day I'm thinking about tourists versus New Yorkers and struggling with that. Um, and every single day, a huge part of my job is is relationship building. Um, and that was true in the parks. Now again, in the parks position, I was actually working as a, I literally was an employee of both the parks department and an NGO. So I, I had, my brain had to work in two, you know, capture two things. And uh, so I constantly have to be uh, working on, I don't have any hard assets, I don't control we have a management contract for those public spaces, but I don't, I don't actually, people say, what do you control in Times Square? It's almost nothing. And so almost everything we do is a result of relationship building and looking for this alignment of interest where the enlightened self-interest of the private sector matches that overlapping circle of governmental interest in making the city better, but not, not having the capacity to do too much for Times Square when there's needs all over the city and that's being fair about it. Uh, and then other NGOs like ourselves that are civic organizations that are just trying to make the place better. And constantly on every single issue looking for those points of intersection because that's when you get, that's when you hit the sweet spot. But it's, you know, it's all these basic processes of communication and patience and that, that you know, that circular uh, ping pong table that'll make you crazy sometime. 